This is Tally reporting to you from Buildry.com from the 2009 West Coast Green Conference in San Francisco. And I'm here with Sally, the inventor of uh, the Rainwater Hog. And uh, she's actually going to talk to us about two of their products here. One is the... Um, Rainwater Hog. And the other one... <laughs> is Hedgehog. Awesome. Okay, so uh, hi, Sally. Hey, going, Tally? Great. So... Uh, can you tell us about these great products? Yeah, so basically what I designed in the very beginning was uh, what I like to think of as a building block you fill with water. So it's a potable plastic rainwater tank that's a module and it can work in any way. So what it's doing is opening up the range of applications and then I'm trying to design specific products that work with it and then other really cool green products. So here is Hedgehog which is basically a freestanding green wall. It's got, um, unlike most green walls, like a lot of people are trying to do green walls at the moment, but then they have to bring in separately the irrigation and then the plants. What I'm trying to do is a considered system that basically supplies the water through the middle with the hogs, which is then connected up to your roof. So you've got rainwater filling the hogs, they're feeding a gravity drip system along the bottom there. And then we've got this beautiful framework supplied by green screen that clips onto the front. So it means that instead of having, say, a box hedge that uses a bunch of water, you can use common ivy, which uses not much, irrigated on its own, low maintenance, grows up over the top into this beautiful lush hedge. I mean, my hedge here is made of moss, but <laughs> it would be lusher than that. It would be lush. <laughs> So that's just, you know, one idea I've got with using this unit to, you know, so already it's a freestanding fence, but now we can actually integrate the planting, integrate the irrigation and get the maintenance down to zero. Awesome. So are you guys actually selling the entire fencing unit with it? Right, yeah. So we do. The fencing comes in units of two hogs. So we basically sell it in, in increments of two. And the idea would be that if you needed a screen or if you were planting a hedge, that after, say, five years, your payback on this is going to start really matching and exceeding planting a classic, like, six-foot-high box hedge. That's the plan. Okay, awesome. Now, do I need a gardener to be able to install this? No. Again, um, you know, so when I design a product, I try and make it set and forget, and I also try and make it idiot-proof. So I'm not suggesting ever that my customers are idiots, but uh, everything is screwed together. So um, I use a Unistrut bat frame so that it can just be screwed directly into, like, either supports in the ground or you cast a footing. I guess you might want someone else to cast the footing if you have to do that. But everything else is just literally put it in the ground, clip the screen on, plant your ivy, walk away. Awesome. Okay, now you were saying that there are other uses for um, for the rain hog? Right, so the other thing we've been working on that I'm super excited about is called Hydration Hog. <laughs> and basically what I'm using is a set of eight of these and they're elevated. And I've got a, a fitting underneath which is, allows you to fill up a drink bottle. And the idea is at festivals, and we're also talking to Vancouver Olympics, about supplying these as units that get filled up from city water at the start of the day. And it means instead of buying plastic bottles and then getting rid of all that waste, you can fill up... Uh, a reusable drink bottle and each set of eight of these will take five and a half thousand single-use plastic bottles off the grid so it's like a zero waste solution that's a green way to hydrate people awesome and what are these uh, made out of these things are low linear density polyethylene so it doesn't off gas it doesn't have BPAs you know there's a whole BPA thing around other types of drink bottles it's food grade, FDA approved, and it's got a really chunky wall. It's super durable because I've designed them to basically last 20 years plus. So, you know, a lot of tanks on the market, just straightforward rainwater tanks, they're very thin walled because you guys don't have standards here yet for that stuff. But Australia has been in drought so long that we have really hard standards on tanks. So I've made this, like, I would say bulletproof, but it's actually not bulletproof. <laughs> um, Sally, I know that I've heard, you know, there's a lot of issues in, you know, certain states in the U.S. with uh, actually collecting your rainwater and certain regulations around that. So uh, uh, what have you guys found? Well, you know, California is great. In fact, there are some cities like Santa Monica that give you up to 100 bucks for each one of these you put in because they want you to save the rainwater and also to take the stormwater off their system. So it's got two uses. I know Colorado, up until about three months ago, the state owned the rain as soon as it left the clouds and you couldn't gather it yourself because they owned it. But I understand that's actually been changed now and you can harvest up to a certain volume in Colorado even. So mm -hmm. that's pretty exciting. I mean, the main thing um, for California is because we have the long summer and then the crazy rainy winter, is that a lot of people say, well, what am I going to do? I can't get enough rain to irrigate all through summer, so what's the point? But what we find is the most effective thing to do with rain is actually flush toilets. Because when you flush toilets, you're flushing like a crazy amount. A family of four, say, can have eight hogs in San Francisco 
flush the toilets for six to seven months of the year when it is raining and for like 400 gallons of storage you can save around 6,000 gallons a year in flushing with rainwater instead of city water. So I mean the savings, it's just the way you configure your rainwater reuse um, is according to state but as far as I know we are now fine, possibly Kentucky still doesn't let you for some weird reason, I don't know, but, um, but as everyone else is now it is a legitimate act to harvest your rainwater. Okay, awesome. Well, thank you so much, Sally. Thank you. Thank you. This is Tally reporting to you from Buildry.com from the 2009 West Coast Green Conference in San Francisco. Thank you for watching.